Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is James Musgrave. I'm a senior consultant here at Capco, and I'm joined today by Faisal Saeed, uh, Director of AML Risk Intelligence Collaboration. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you, James, for having me here. Awesome. So I uh, wanted to get your perspective on a few interesting trends that we have seen in the industry pertaining to data and analytics. Uh, so we know that AML and fraud analytics are a big area of focus and investment for banks and uh, especially regarding the role of data management, um, big data analytics and AM, uh, AI and machine learning techniques are very critical in this field and the fight against AML, terrorist financing and other fraud related areas. Uh, and in addition to that, the amount of data uh, that is being used to build models and algorithms is also increasing in very interesting ways. Sources are available uh, from new and uh, unique areas. However, many of the longstanding challenges of integration are still remaining. Uh, what we have seen here at CAPCO is a move towards an interesting trend called data collaboration. Uh, this really places the user at the center of the data management experience by rapidly enabling uh, integration through augmented mm -hmm. data management and data governance uh, and, and other interesting features. So we wanted to get your take on some of these recent trends. In your opinion, what are some of the biggest challenges with data integration in the post COVID-19 landscape? What trends have you seen across the industry lately? Well, in the industry, the post COVID uh, things have changed very significantly. It used to be much more um, interaction uh, with the customer in the face to face channel. You know, people would walk into uh, a financial institution and would like to do transactions in person. And there were more uh, traditional type of transactions like cash or checks. Now things have uh, switched around dramatically where uh, customers are relying much more on electronic channels of transactions uh, for authenticating themselves and for conducting transactions. So the data that is being collected is very different and the behaviors uh, from customers on uh, doing their transactions are much more different. So collecting that and processing that and identifying correct behaviors it has become a um, much bigger challenge in the post COVID world. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, some of those behavioral changes uh, we've seen impacting organizations in a few uh, interesting ways, but certainly from a data and analytics perspective. Uh, what are some of the key solutions uh, that you have seen or heard of uh, that can help address some of these unique uh, challenges and opportunities that you've encountered because of COVID-19? So in the pre-COVID-19 uh, situation, we were flooded with data coming from various channels, uh, traditional channels um, uh, in terms of databases, in terms of uh, organized data, in terms of structured data, as well as new uh, sources were identified for unstructured data, such as social media. Now, data is still coming through all those channels, but uh, in very different uh, modes and very different behaviors. So in a way, we are experiencing scarcity of data instead of the flood of usual flood of data that we saw before. That for a, such a short time, such a short history since uh, last few months, we have this data for these new behaviors and new trends. How do we rely on that data and extract behaviors that can be used to train new models that can be used to tune existing models? So the growing trend in the industry is to collaborate and share that data within the institutions as well as intra-institution as well. So different collaboration technologies and methodologies are being uh, deployed to make best use of this data. Okay. Yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, touching on this notion of scarcity of data, 
Um, I guess a lot of that is driven from just how unique and unprecedented uh, these times actually are. Um, building on, on some of that, uh, we've seen some capabilities, you know, such as you know, augmented data management, data fabrics, uh, unified data platforms, and, and other things uh, become popular in recent years. Which capability do you think is going to be the most critical uh, and needs to be the most widely adopted across the industry right now? We are uh, heading towards um, the traditional siloed uh, financial approach into a more open banking, open environment approach where the consumer directs their data to be shared across different financial institutions. And this will yield into much more um, productive use of the scarce data, but uh, provide better quality of data and more authenticated data to be shared across different institutions. Yeah, that's, that's actually very interesting. So the collaboration extends even beyond the four walls of your organization and uh, uh, includes partnerships with other financial services organizations or other providers or, or, or other services. Um, if you were to look at some of the new data sources that um, have become more uh, important or uh, increasingly significant uh, because of these recent times, um, what would you identify uh, in terms of, let's say, data exchanges as having uh, renewed importance in this age? What new data sources have you been looking at? So for uh, data collaboration, two questions need to be answered. One, who is the customer? In other words, authentication. And secondly, is what the customer is doing in terms of what the transactions are, what the behavior is being exhibited here. So using open banking APIs through these exchanges, both of these can be securely um, ident uh, answered and uh, customer authentication can be exchanged across uh, institutions. It can be shared without having to store or communicate um, PII. And that will eliminate uh, many opportunities or exposures, I should say, for um, data theft and breaches. If the customer PII is not stored, there is no incentive for uh, a breach and the exposure of that is going to be much more limited. Okay, so it does sound like um, some of these opportunities have in some ways been accelerated by the current landscape. Um, in terms of data collaboration more generally, uh, where do you see it having the biggest impact and where do you think data collaboration has the potential to unlock the most value? So because of the COVID situation, the data gathering channels have um, accelerated and differentiated from previous ones. Uh, in terms of acceleration, digitization has been embraced much more rapidly than in the past few years. Many channels, many interactions are being digitized and customers as well as uh, banks are accepting them much more rapidly. So data is available through those channels and it will be collected and growing uh, in volumes in the near future. The opportunities for benefiting from that data uh, most uh, immediately would be in the financial crime areas like uh, fraud and anti-money laundering. Um, you know, the traditional notion that information is the key. So through data breaches, the fraudsters or bad actors um, steal a portion of data and they try to develop synthetic IDs, they try to do account takeovers and uh, try to mimic customer behaviors. But 
if that information is not completely available and they only have a portion of such data available, whereas the financial institution has a view of much bigger, much wider picture about who the customer is and what the customer has been doing in the past, it is much easier to contain such exposures. Okay. Um, I have a few more questions that I want to ask, uh, just kind of focusing on some of those uh, pieces. So you've mentioned a lot of this uh, pertaining to the exchange of information between institutions and finding ways to make it more secure uh, by design in many ways. So for example, limiting the exchange of information to eliminate PII so that it's not potentially exposed during these types of transmissions. Um, what do you see as the biggest hurdle uh, and why, why have like I to is this happening already? And where do we see the biggest hurdle to making this more widespread across the industry? Right now, we don't have an industry standard within Canada or even at the international level for exchanging okay. such information, and there is um, a lot of fear of um, privacy uh, being breached because of uh, this lack of standardization. So as soon as we achieve that uh, standard API, where this information can be exchanged securely and safely, uh, it will open the gates to this information exchange. So if you were to chart a course to making this a reality as soon as possible, what are some of the key milestones that need to be achieved in order to enable this type of collaboration between financial services or open banking or, or other partners? So in Canada, different uh, players have been uh, envisioning and exploring this uh, situation already, uh, albeit uh, the situation was slowed down because of the change in environment because, uh, due to COVID. And now we are coming back to uh, picking up the pace. So for example, the Chief Privacy Commissioner has already been uh, in the consultation process for the privacy laws in Canada for um, how the current regulations need to be updated to accept these um, industry standard uh, open APIs for exchange of information. Uh, the financial institutions have stepped up uh, in terms of setting up uh, a financial information exchange in Canada, and more than 30 institutions are already participating and others are fast following to accept and adopt uh, a common standard for information exchange. Uh, Ministry of Finance is helping push this forward as well for uh, adopting uh, these common standards rather than enforcing it from the government. Coming it from the industry is going to be much more acceptable and yeah. much more um, current, so to speak. Do you, are there any international uh, jurisdictions where you think they are kind of leading the pack in this area? Is there any model that Canada could potentially follow in order to implement a system like this? So I think the closest one that comes to mind is the European standard GDPR uh, for uh, defining customer information and providing the uh, consumer the control for their information to be exchanged. So there is definitely room for uh, learning from that and uh, taking it to the next level. And I think Canada has the potential to be a world leader in this area. Okay, sounds like you're very optimistic about uh, some of these opportunities and certainly about collaboration. So uh, yeah, thank you very much. Anything else you'd like to share from your perspective? Any other interesting thoughts? Uh, I think uh, that uh, having these conversations are a great opportunity to exchange ideas and uh, further the discussion on these. 
and thank you for arranging these uh, online conversations as we are still uh, in the COVID environment. Uh, doing electronic exchanging and online forums uh, will be a great way to keep the conversation moving forward. So thank you for that and thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Absolutely, and thank you for joining us today. And we're very excited to hear from you and hope to hear from you again soon. So thank you very much. All right, thank you.